Learn fiber optics with Senko. Let's learn about some of the common fiber optic terminologies. Optical fibers have a core and cladding with different index of refraction, or IOR. This difference in their index of refraction causes a phenomenon called total internal reflection, which keeps the light inside the core as long as the angle of incidence of the optical signal is larger than the critical angle. A smaller angle of incidence will cause light to escape from the core into the cladding. Although light is supposed to travel only within the core, it doesn't fully stay in the core. This diameter of the light beam is known as the mode field diameter, or MFD. The MFD is usually slightly larger than the core. Light is made up of a range of wavelengths, which propagates at a slightly different velocity in the optical fiber. Over long distances, the difference of velocity causes the wavelengths to spread, and this effect is called chromatic dispersion. In multi-mode fibers, optical signals experience another form of dispersion called modal dispersion. Modal dispersion is caused by the difference in light paths that light can take in multi-mode fiber and can even occur with a monochromatic light source. Optical attenuation is the best described as the loss of optical power. Some factors that contribute to attenuation are absorption by the optical fiber material, imperfections of the fiber causing light to reflect or scatter, and finally, macrobending and microbending loss, where light escapes the fiber core when it is excessively bent beyond its specified limits. Almost all identical fibers may look the same, but on the inside, they can be very different. The two most common types are known as single-mode and multi-mode fibers. Single-mode fibers can then be further divided into OS1 and OS2, while multi-mode fibers can be divided into OM1 to OM5. The ITUT standard recommends a range of optical fiber cable specifications from G.651 to G.657. G.652 outlines the characteristics of the most widely deployed single-mode fiber type in the world, with G.652D being the latest standard that integrates all the advantages of its previous standards. It is the introduction of G.652D that makes fiber to the home, or FTTH, possible. G.653, G.655, and G.656 outlines the characteristics of a dispersion-shifted single-mode fiber that is designed to reduce optical dispersion for long-haul transmission. The latest specification has been developed to support high-bandwidth WDM transmission over hundreds of kilometers. G.654 outlines the cutoff-shifted single-mode fiber, which has reduced attenuation, and a larger MFD. The fiber is usually used for long-distance transmissions, such as in submarine cables that connect countries across continents. Finally, the latest ITU fiber family, which is the G.657, that outlines a range of bending loss insensitive single-mode fibers with very small minimum bending radii. They are specially developed to support the growing fiber to the home market where cables need to be installed in tight corners in customer homes and buildings. The specifications in the ITUT were established to ensure fiber performance standardization. However, it does not mean that every manufacturer's optical fiber is made the same way as they can deploy different designs to achieve similar outcomes. An example is the bend and sensitive G.657.A2 fiber. Manufacturers change the fiber or IOR profile to achieve the intended bending requirements. So how do you join two separate fibers? The common ways are by using optical connectors and fiber splicing. There are mainly two splicing methods, which are the mechanical splice and the fusion splice. Mechanical splice is done by using a sleeve with V-grooves. 
two optical fiber ends are butted together with index matching gel to reduce reflection. The fibers are then clamped in position, but they remain as two separate fibers. Fusion splicing is done by using two fiber ends. Usually, an electric arc is applied to melt the two fiber ends to create a continuous piece of fiber. This splice point is then protected using a splice protection sleeve. This method produces one of the lowest attenuation of any fiber joints. Optical connectors hold the fibers in place and are aligned and butted against each other within an adapter to make a connection. Connectors are used where quick mating and demating is needed. There is a wide range of connector types, and some even have better optical performance compared to splicing. Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you learned something about the various type of optical fibers and their applications. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for our latest updates, and we will see you in our next video.